All right, welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of the features and differences between the various kinds of arteries that we have within the body. All right, so on this, I'm, I'm backing up here to the last uh, figure from um, the first lecture for chapter 19. So looking over here at our arteries, of course, arteries carry blood away from the heart, you know, no matter whether you're in the pulmonary circulation or in the systemic circulation. The largest in the systemic circulation, the largest arteries that are carrying blood away from the heart are called elastic arteries. So as the name suggests, they have a lot of elastic tissue inside the walls. Uh, with lots of elastic fibers that help them rebound shape. That makes sense because if you think about it, the left ventricle pushes um, stroke volumes of blood with each heartbeat up into the aorta and then that blood quickly flows from the aorta into your largest artery. So those larger arteries receive the biggest oomph of uh, new blood with each heartbeat. So once that blood passes through, they need to be able to rebound um, in shape and that also helps maintain your blood pressure and make sure that the blood keeps flowing from one location to another. Those elastic arteries <clears throat> divide up or branch off into muscular arteries. Those are kind of your middle sized arteries. Those are going to lead to smaller arteries which eventually bring you to the smallest ones. Those are called arterioles. And those are down in very local tissue areas. You're kind of getting down to the microscopic level at this point. And um, then those flow into your capillary beds. Capillaries are microscopic blood vessels, which are just one cell thick. The walls are just one cell thick, very, very small. And that's where you have your fluid exchange between the blood and your tissues with all the goodies moving out and all the bad stuff being picked up um, into the blood so the blood can carry it away so you can eliminate it from your from your body. Okay so this is just showing you this diagram from your textbook is highlighting for you some of the key differences in terms of the thickness of the walls and so forth between your elastic and your muscular arteries and then again when you get down to the arterial level um, these are getting down to the microscopic level. So the diameter there, the lumen inside an arteriole is 37 micrometers in diameter. If you've never heard of a micrometer before, you will when you take your microbiology class. That's one one millionth of a meter. A meter is about three feet in length. Um, as compared to your muscular arteries, the diameter across a muscular artery is about six millimeters in length. So that's uh, about a third of an inch, roughly. So they're pretty small also. The elastic arteries, your biggest arteries, on average, the diameter is about one and a half centimeters. So that's going to be over an inch across. So those are fairly large. And over here on this part of the table, they're just showing you the relative tissue makeups inside these arteries and so the blue bars there are showing you how much elastic tissue you tend to have in these three different types of arteries how much smooth muscle tissue you tend to have in these three different types of arteries as well the muscular arteries have the most smooth muscle tissue those are the ones that tend to get zapped by your nervous system the most to trigger constriction or relaxation vasoconstriction vasodilation of those particular arteries. Okay, so again, some key features about your elastic arteries. Those are the largest, they have the thickest walls, lots of elastin in all three tunics, all three layers of the walls of those arteries. And this one includes the aorta as an elastic artery and its biggest branches are elastic arteries as well, which you'll be studying those biggest branches over on the anatomy side for this particular chapter. The lumen is large, so the space on the inside is large, and that provides low resistance. We'll be talking more, um, not too far down the road here in the chapter, about resistance to blood flow. That's uh, important for controlling or influencing your blood pressure. That makes sense. If a space is wider, 
the fluid flowing through it does not have as much resistance to flowing through. If you constrict that space, um, it's there's more resistance to the fl fluid moving through, and that's what helps increase the pressure inside um, that compartment. Okay, your elastic arteries are not involved in vasoconstriction, so later when we're talking more about how your sympathetic nervous system controls whether arteries are constricted or relaxed, it's not these guys that are involved in that. Um, these, as I've already mentioned, they expand and then they recoil due to the elasticity uh, as blood gets ejected from the heart and then as that blood continues to move downstream. And that's important for helping you maintain proper blood pressure. You wouldn't want them to expand and just stay expanded because then you're, uh, as that blood flows through, your blood pressure would actually drop in that expanded artery. If it recoils, it helps maintain that pressure inside there, which is very important for your blood flow. The muscular arteries are medium-sized arteries, contain a lot of smooth muscle in the walls, as we already mentioned. Um, these are the ones that are taking blood to particular body organs and locations, and they are active in vasoconstriction. So later when we're learning about how your sympathetic nervous system controls vasoconstriction, um, just realize that these muscular arteries are involved in that as well. The arterioles are the smallest ones. Again, those lead to your capillary beds, and they also are involved in vasoconstriction and vasodilation, as well as will be seen shortly. You do not always have blood flowing to every single tissue location in your body if you don't have enough blood to do that. Uh, particular tissue locations, the blood flow is turned on or turned off or allowed to pass to those locations or not depending on whether those particular tissues need oxygen gas or need nutrients. If they don't, then um, the blood flow gets cut off until they wind up needing that again at another time. You do not have enough blood in your body for blood to flow to every possible body location all at once. So you actually have to put up some roadblocks to particular tissues depending on what your needs are. All right, so that was just a little short um, blurb with some more information on arteries. The next lecture we're going to talk more about these capillaries that we have that are supplying blood, microscopic blood vessels that are supplying blood to very specific tissue locations and they're also the locations where you have this fluid flow out of the blood and into the surrounding tissues and vice versa.